How would I sell Germantown Football Club? I think Germantown Football Club is quite unique um, for us. It's the biggest club in Norfolk um, other than Norwich City. And for people to come up and look at our facilities, it, it, it sells itself, you know, and there's no other football club in Norfolk have got what we've got here. And, you know, I've been chairman here now two years and obviously I saw the potential of the football club. Um, and I think the football club has got a massive, massive opportunity to push on. Um, it's like every football club, it's, it's hard work and it takes a lot of people behind the scenes to do everything the right way. Um, but we've got a cracking team of people behind the scenes here. And when people come up here, we get praised and praised and praised for what the, you know, the place is. Last January, um, when the club was bottom, obviously along with the new managers, and um, I think we just kicked on from there. Really, had a really good sort of three or four months, and um, yeah, we can't wait to get started for the next season. It's a great club. Obviously, I've played local football sort of since I was 16, so I've always played against Durham, and you know, and coming here so you, from the outside it always looks like a great club. And in January, just everything was sort of you know came to light. It's a great club. Everyone behind the scenes are, are excellent, and uh, you know, the fan base as well. We get here is great. You know, we get. Close to 200 people every weekend, which is, you know, for local football, it's good. And obviously, next year with a with a good run, I think, and a bit of success, we can, you know, up the numbers that come through the gate. I think from from January last year to the end of the season, I think when you look at the form table, we were up there in the top six. So I think we, you know, we can't have anything less than really a push for the playoffs. If I'm honest. Great club, um, well supported, um, good management, good side, um, and hopefully. It's, it's going to be a really good year for us. From January, February, actually, if you look at the form table, we were from then to the end of the season, we were we were playoffs. So you can never say, you know, it a lot depends on the start of the season, um, and that make sure we have a good one, make sure we're we're prepared right, and hopefully we come through pre-season fit and no injuries, and just really hit the ground running. Um, well, off the back end of last season, uh, I managed to play the full 90 for Durham first team. Um, only being 16, that's quite an achievement for myself. At the start of this season, I'd like to try and secure that position as left back and play as many games and get off to a great start. There's two other people that I know of in the squad at the moment that can play left back, which is Tom McLeish and Owen Murphy, who are very strong. I just feel that I can have a shot at this and that I don't think it's over and that I can still give competition. I think we have to look at what we've done last season and, and, and again take confidence from that and know that we can compete against the top sides. However, we played teams at times where they didn't have anything to play for. So you are playing teams sometimes in the second half of the season if you're scrapping for points and trying to stay up and teams aren't necessarily playing for much that you have an advantage in that sense. So I'm not naive enough to think that you know, it's going to be as easy as what it was second half of the season from the off of this season. I think you have to look at them in isolation. Everyone at the start of the season especially is really, really up for it, obviously, and will think that they've got a good chance of having a good season. We're no different to that. But yeah, we've, we've got to look at this season in isolation. We've got some new bodies in. And yeah, I think we, we, we need to really concentrate on what we're doing this season. Last season was difficult for different reasons. We got out of the position we were in. And the objective is quite simply to make sure we're not in or anywhere near the position that we were in for much of last season. So the boys know that. They've got you know, drive in them, I think, to, to try and kick on from where we were last season. And if we can get a good start, then you know, there's nothing to, to say that we can't you know, have a good season.
Dave and Ali for fun by doing it. All right, same with you at the end, Ryan. You run into his face. He don't need to do that. He needs a space in behind so we can then attack him and then we can get in the box and finish him, right? Because we have to understand as a team, all right, and it starts from now, we have to understand as a team where our strengths are. Bungie game, which was the first game, it was just about getting the cobwebs out. We hadn't done any real ball work in training as such. Well, we'd done a little bit, but not a lot. And it was, you know, to be expected that we were going to be rusty. And actually, it was good for, for us to see that and the players to feel that because they knew that it wasn't quite good enough in terms of performance. So it, it gave us, you know, a clear pathway, if you like, in, in terms of what we needed to work on. So, yeah, no issues with, with anything. It's not results pre season, it is about getting the minutes in early doors.
know, we lost the game 3-1, but we came out of that fixture. You know, I think we felt that actually that was a really big performance. And I know it's pre-season, and you can't, you know, read too much into to results and performances sometimes. But actually, I think we got in the change room afterwards, and we were like, we could have gone one or two ways at 3-0 down after 25 minutes. We could have sunk because Kingsland didn't go easy on us. We could have sunk, and it could have been seven or eight. Um, but we came out the other side, and, and you know, from 30 minutes onwards, matched the Conference North side, who were still playing properly. They weren't taking it easy. So, you know, I think that gave us, a, you know, has given us a real you know, lift in terms of how how we can compete against really top quality sides. And you know, we've got some really good players here. We feel organised. We feel fit. Um, and obviously, you know, we're ready for the season to start, which is where we want to be. From football club, I think is again Norfolk is a is a really special county. Um, we're proud to represent the county at the level that we do play at, and, and again I think it's really important because we do represent the county. We're the only side within that standard, so as a day it was really important that we we did get behind it. It was our only home friendly, so you know we had face painting and, and proceeds to Norfolk's cancer charity, which was a seamless link for us. But attendance was fantastic. I think we probably got around 200 which for a league game would be pretty pretty good for a pre-season friendly. It was phenomenal, so you know it was amazing to see people come out and support it. We saw lots of kind of traction and people talking about it afterwards, and to be able to do that with, with what is a near neighbour and a, another good football club at another level below us, so we can be the bigger club for a day was really important as well. So a huge success, we raised I think it was £322 for charity, which is again, given that little bit back. So yeah, massive and, and hopefully there'll be more days like that as well. Me and Gus have been working together, obviously I've played with Gus for a number of years and I've worked with Gus now on the management side for three or four seasons and we both know exactly how it works. He knows that if he's not about I'll happily step in but we're very comfortable with how we work together and that he heads things up but my role is that I'll challenge Gus constantly, I'm happy to do that behind the scenes as well. He's, he's good with that, he's, he's happy with that and I think that's where he sees my role it's quite important in that I will challenge what he thinks right and even if I think it's right I'll still challenge what he thinks is right even though I know it's right to make sure we're both on the same page and the decision nine times out of ten is the correct one and we appreciate sometimes we'll both get it wrong but we're happy that with the decision we take we'll go with it and we'll stand by what we think is right. Going back to that match short game off we prepared as we'd normally prepare we do everything the same see Chris makes up the three of us um, and we we prepare as we would for any game. And I thought we, yeah, we played well.
I mean, it's, it's, it's really good playing against, you know, sides from leagues above because, you know, th th we got done on two set pieces at lowest oft and the quality into the box, no disrespect to some of the other teams that were playing, but you might not get that against lesser sides. So it was really a worthwhile exercise, both of those games, as we knew it would be, and hence why we were keen to get those fixtures in. Um, and I think we did, you know, the lowest off game. And, and I said to the boys after that one, you should really be kicking yourselves because we've more than matched a side that's, you know, above us in the pyramid. Yet we've lost the game 2 0 because we haven't defended two set pieces. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, as a manager, you pull your hair out and stuff like that, as players, for going toe to toe for the rest of the game, to lose out on that is, is difficult. And that could be an FA Cup game where you go up to a high league opposition because you can't pick somebody up at a set piece. So the Porto link, we always do normal player sign-ins and, and player interviews as they, they would happen. And Jake seemed like a logical one to do as a new sign-in in his Porto shirt, just turned up for his, his medical and, and bits of the physio. So we, I think we then posted that out that night. And then I was away, I think I was at of work, trying to function. I had some messages coming through about us being big in Portugal or something. And it just randomly like picked it up, was looking at the, the Twitter feed and, and it literally kind of taken off. I think Ellis, um, he does, he's got his YouTube channel, Ellis Away Days, I think, had picked it up and commented on it and from there it just kind of exploded. So we ended up having, I don't know if it got to 10, 12,000 views um, over a matter of minutes and then peaked to 100,000 views. So we were onto something. From that, the Durham fans have now got this strange but lovely affiliation with Porto. I'd like to think this is a, a long-term relationship which continues, but yeah, phenomenal for us as a club. I think, um, think pre-season is a funny thing because you, have, you obviously have a, you know, a couple of months where you're not really doing a lot, you're keeping yourself fit kind of behind the scenes, but it's nice to come back and see all the boys and, and obviously it's great that you know, there's some fresh signings. I've only had a couple out and a couple in, so it's not been a massive change in personnel and faces. But the lads that have come in, I think Toby Hilliard who's come in, he was here previously, so he's fit straight in. But yeah, I think pre-season's key, building relationships and bonds. And obviously, the couple of months you have away from, from the lads, it's good to get back in and sort of build their relationships again. And yeah, I think we're, we're in a good place. Yeah, I think it's, it's been quite a long pre-season for us in terms of the league starts a little, or started a little bit later than what we, we thought it might originally. So we got in quite early, gave us a good opportunity to get our fitness levels up to where, where we really wanted to get them to. And, and it's allowed us a bit more time to work on you know, patterns of play and how we kind of want to set up and approach the season. So it's, it's worked out quite well for us and I think we're ready now. Um, I think if we were to start this week, we'd be fine. So it just gives us an extra week next week to really prepare, fine tune a few things and hopefully hit the ground running uh, come the 17th. I'm, I'm really optimistic, really optimistic. I think we've got a, a, you know, a great set of lads here that um, that will do really well. As long as we can stay injury free and and you know we, we give everything which we will, um, I think we could have a really, really good year. For me, I'd, target's got to be in and, around, in and around the playoffs. It depends on the start, obviously. It'd be nice to get some silverware again with the Senior Cup, which will obviously hopefully go into favourites. 
I think how we finished half a season we were here, we built that momentum and it's so important and it's not that momentum as a starting 11 and us as management, but is it as a club. Momentum just builds and you notice it through social media, you notice it if you go into town and people start talking about it, you notice it on the match days where you get here and there's that feel that yeah we're here for a night game, you just know it's going to go well. Instead of, again I've been there a number of times where things aren't going so well, you get here and it, it's not that buzz and it's hard to get yourself up for it. When we, when we talk about building momentum, it's not just me, it's not just Gus, it's not just the players. We need to build that as a club and I feel it's in an absolutely wonderful place with regards to building that momentum and doing well this season.